Hey guys. Alexis, Sophia Leather. All right, this is part four. In all fairness, fair. The no edit is gonna make me look really bad. I'm just being honest. In all transparency, this is basically the end of part three. I just hit the record button again, so it's all filmed the same day, but I'm gonna piecemeal it out to you guys because I think 30 minutes is a long time. So I just continued from part three. I just literally hit the record button again is what I did. So this is part four and we left off beveling most of the pieces and burnishing most of the pieces. Now we're gonna put the edge coat on, uh, on the edges um, and we still have to uh, burnish this piece. But what I'm gonna do is put the edge coat on all these other pieces, let that dry, and then work on this as that's drying. And then while I'm assembling that, then this is drying. Does it make sense? So I'm maximizing my time. I'm gonna get this out of the way. There is one more thing I have to tend to, and that is this piece. I forgot to burnish this, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And also he wanted a stamp somewhere on the holster. And I don't know where that's gonna go. I don't know where that's gonna go, but we're gonna have to figure it out. I'm over here. I'm sorry, I was too lazy to move the camera. I'm just being honest. It's a long day. This is like my third video. I filmed a little video with my boys. I still gotta edit. I still gotta do some real estate work a little bit. Um, long day, I still gotta cook dinner, do daddy daycare stuff. And my wife is out running around showing houses. Just busy. But I got to spend some time with my boys this morning in the shop, which is awesome. That's always a pleasure. Can you even hear me or am I being ridiculous right now? You can't hear me, can you? Do you even care though? That's a problem. And that's also a question. All right, so that's beveled, burnished. So everything here, let's move the camera. Right here, right here, boom. Right there, boom. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. We never even got to use the sandpaper, but I will later on on that big, on the uh, bigger strap piece. All right, so all these pieces are ready for the edge coat. And I'm gonna show you what I do. In this jar, I have acrylic resiline. In this jar, I have a crusty magic eraser. It's a little, it's just a cheap version of the magic eraser, not like the actual legit one but the cheap model. Let me show you exactly what's in these two jars. And where is my acrylic resiline? I cannot find my acrylic resiline. This is a problem. It's right here. Acrylic resiline, that's what's in the jar. And I cut up a whole bunch of these magic erasers, the cheap version magic erasers uh, you get on Amazon. All you gotta do is look up Magic Eraser and then get the cheap model that's the cheapest. Because all you're doing is using this to soak up the mat material. This is really a really good absorbent and it doesn't leak. That's why I'm using it. So I'm just gonna dip it in there and I'm literally gonna put it on there. See how it doesn't leak? I can really saturate this, this piece and it doesn't leak. That's, that's the reason why I use the Magic Eraser. You're literally just gonna watch me put an edge coat on everything. It's gonna be the, the worst video you've ever seen in your life. My favorite is, is doing this, the holster here. It's, it's like super meaty right here and it's so satisfying to, to put, to put, uh, the solution on all this edge here. I don't know why, it's just my favorite part of the whole process right here. Is that weird? Do I have a problem? Be honest. If you're a true friend, you'd be honest with me. Okay, now we're gonna do just the edges on everything. I said that a million times. Why can't I just be quiet and not say anything? What's the problem?
These little pieces I usually do last because they're so small you end up getting some of this on your finger. And I just told you that's the last thing I do and I just lied because obviously it's not, see? Now you know how terrible I really am in life. I'm a sad person. <laughs> All right, here we go. And that is it for that. Now that's all gonna dry. Now we're gonna work on We're gonna work on this guy. And let me show you what I do. Because this is a little bit tricky. I guess I should make some space for myself. Alright. <sighs> All right, what I do here is I keep it in this horseshoe configuration. And first I see if there's any kind of glue, all right? There's no glue except for right here. And I take the 150 and I just kind of clean up anything that needs a little cleaning up. You can go ahead and clean that up. Any glue or any obvious pieces and when you didn't trim it right, same thing over here. There's a little bit of glue, it's a little raised over here. So I'm just gonna touch this up. Everything else looks good. I'm gonna finish it off with a 800 grit just to get some of that. Those little fine little bits out. And this will yield a really nice finish. But I'm gonna show you. I don't use a burnisher. I do this by hand. Now, depending how thick your leather is, I have the same principle like I, like I did in, uh, I use the same principle like I did in the uh, part three. And that is basically using the smaller the smaller groove to get the rounded edge and then a bigger groove to get it uh, the flat side and then I finish off with this. But check this out, my battery is gonna die in this camera. If it does, I'll uh, put a new battery in and start filming again. So I only go halfway Glycerin saddle soap, that was just water initially. I go halfway for this reason. I find that tighter groove. And you can see that it's not touching the flat side of the leather, it's just making that a little round, right? I hit it with some water again. I go on that flat side, now I'm gonna go on the, the thicker groove. All right, I'm gonna go on the thicker groove. Now it's getting the flat side of that leather. It's actually making full contact with this um, burnisher. And it's hard to work this way, so what I do is I cheat and I flip it around. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but I do have to change the battery on this camera. So let me just burnish this real quick and then I'll change the battery and We'll do the other side. But I'm not gonna do any work, it's still gonna be real time. All right. And then the flat side. All right, I'm not gonna do any more work. Let me change the battery, I'll be right back. All right, we got a fresh battery. Hopefully it looks the same. All right, so now I'm gonna wet everything again. And I'm gonna use this guy here. Cause I feel like I can really get a good burnish on this.
And you want to keep doing this so you get that tacky kind of feeling. You can kind of hear it too. So we, it's hard to explain, but you start to feel it really get a little smoother and a little drier. And it has like a squeaky kind of, it's a feel thing. I can't really explain it. Yeah, see, that's good. We're gonna do it on the other side now. And this is just to establish that rounded edge a little bit. Now we're gonna go flat side a little bit, which is a little bit round. The other side. Ooh, it's a shoulder workout. I'm happy with that. There's a little glue right here. I can feel it, it's bothering me. So I'm gonna take this 800 grit. See if I can sand that down a little bit. Just a little tiny, teeny bit glue right there. I know some guys have spent hours getting a nice edge. And uh, I don't spend that much time. That was pretty profound, right? What I just told you. I just wasted your time, basically. All right, now as far as these round edges, I cheat. I use the machine over there because it does way better than what I can do by hand. So I'm gonna go over there and I'm not gonna move my camera. I'm just gonna focus all the way over there. And I'll show you. But right here, wow, that's a really close up. I'm just gonna go ahead and wet the edges here, both. And I'm gonna pay close attention to this front piece here where my name is at, because that's what people are gonna see. This one's gonna get covered up. So I'm gonna come over here and really work on this front piece. Because this wheel just does way better than what I can do by hand. I'll finish it by hand a little bit. And sometimes, in all fairness and transparency, sometimes I'll go ahead and use this burnishing tool, this bench top burnishing tool for the whole radial strap, then I'll finish it by hand like I just did. I don't know, I just, sometimes I switch between doing it completely by hand or partially by hand or using this or not. I don't know, it depends how I feel. Sometimes I feel like you get a better burnish by hand. That's why I do it by hand on this main body of the, of the piece because this is what they're gonna feel and this is what they're gonna see the most. So I like to pay attention to that more than anything. Okay. Alrighty, hold on. Oh man, I flipped my screen. All right. Okay, so those are all over here. This is, that has the, the stuff that's uh, the edge coat. 
This is why I do that first, then I work on this, because now I'm gonna put the edge coat on this while I work on that. That makes sense? So I'm gonna put all this burnishing stuff away because we are done with it completely. So I like to tidy up just a little bit first. Because it gets messy real quick if you're not careful. Where's, see I already lost something. That's how fast, that's how fast that is. Are you serious guy? I lost a couple things. Where's the glycerin saddle soap? I just had it in my hand. I'm not even gonna bother. All right, so we're gonna do the edge coat on this. And I do it just like this. No different than anything else. But I like to put a heavy coat, like every foot or so I re-dip. And when I come to the edge here, I go ahead and go, I'll make my full round all the way around. I'll go ahead and do the front here as well. Yeah, don't be bashful on this. I dip every foot or so and reapply because this is gonna get the brunt of the work. So that is, the reason, oh, by the way, the reason why I have these covers on here is because I don't want it to dry up. If you leave this out in the open, you can't reuse it. It dries up and gets hard, basically turns to plastic. So this, I'm just gonna move out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll flip it and do the other side. But these items right here, I can almost start assembling a lot of these items. The holster itself, I'll start working on the holster right now. So we're getting into assembly at this point. I got 20 minutes left to make this a 30 minute video and that's the goal. So let's see how much we can get done in 30 minutes. Now my holsters, the way I do it is that I don't put on this back piece, I don't, my, my uh, clicker doesn't have holes here because I just have to follow these. It's a lot easier to follow these holes than trying to line up the two holes. So I don't know if that makes any sense. So all I got to do to make this right is uh, follow these holes on top. Because if you had them and you had to locate them and make them perfect, they're not gonna be perfect. So, this way when you put these together, when you glue them together, you don't have to be exactly perfect and all you gotta do is spend 22 seconds of your time. Now that's perfect, you see? A lot easier than trying to line up two different sets. Okay, now if I recall, he wanted the name MCFR somewhere on the holster. So we're gonna have to do that real quick. Let me see real quick. Full in. MCFR. MC, I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just put MCFR. I can't put the whole name on there. And what we'll do is go M, C, F, R. And we'll put that on the anti-sway strap. We're gonna put that on here, M, C, F, R. Because there literally is no room to do this anywhere else. Part one, I showed you guys how to use these stamps. M, C, F, R. So I'm just gonna kinda try to line this up. Once you got it lined up the way you want, once you do one, then you're golden. Cause then you can come off of that. All right, so I'm just lining up.
These are self-spacing stamps. I know a lot of you guys know that. But once you line it up and you hit one end, then you're good. You just self-space and follow the next one. So there is MCFR. All right, let's put this away. Next, since that's drying over there, we can start assembling this radial uh, holster. Hold on, I gotta put these back in order. Q, R, S, why am I singing? That's how I know my ABCs, don't judge me. All right, I literally, that wasn't a joke, I actually, that's what I do. It works, man. All right, I'm gonna get this, move this out of the way just a touch. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my riveting tools and I need my rivets, my mallet, and my nippers, all right? This is what I use. Rivet, mallet, nippers. That's what I use to rivet things in. So we're gonna go ahead and start assembling a little bit. And let me just double check on the hardware color. Shiny brass, perfect. So at the, you, know, you know what I'm gonna do in this video? I'm actually gonna go ahead and just assemble the holster and the radio holster. So we'll do that first. Let's go ahead and lay this here. The very first thing I'm gonna do though is these guys. These are the button head screws that I use to attach a couple of things. So I'm gonna put this in first on all the pieces that require it. And that is basically this holster right here. I gotta, I gotta fasten that to that part of the holster. And these uh, mic loop keepers and belt keepers, belt loop keepers, I put that in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that squared away first. What I do is I put a drop of red Loctite in here first, one little drop. And we're gonna assemble it like so. I always start it by hand. And then you can finish off. And the way you do it is you put this on your belly like this. This is, I'm being honest. <laughs> and then do this. I don't know why, it's easier than trying to do this. I, to me, it just helps you line up. I'm not, I'm not joking at all. I'm being honest. I don't know why, but it just works. Oh, I did that off camera. This is the worst tutorial ever. It's not really a tutorial, just for the record. Just showing you in real time. Uh, I got 15 minutes left for this video. All right, one more. Let me do this in camera again. So be careful with this uh, Loctite to not get it on your finger and then start messing with your leather. See that on my finger? You gotta make sure you get that off. This is not a how to assemble my radio holster. I made a video for that. But uh, there it is, it's gotta tighten it up. Not too tight, you don't wanna dig through that hole you made. But you'll feel it, hand tight, boom. Done. All right, next is this part. Can you see that? Gonna make a little noise. I'm 
and I'm gonna run this D-ring over, slide that over, Dunskis. So there's that D-ring. Now we have to run this through here. Let me back this out a little bit. This is stout leather, so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get through there. But once you get it in there, you're good to go. All right, and then what we're gonna do is flip this around and secure it to these two holes back here like that. And I use a Chicago screw for this part, and I use a half inch because that's really stout, this 12 ounce leather folded on itself, so. Same thing with the Loctite on this. If you use a 5.30 seconds hole punch, which I use for everything, whenever you use Chicago screws, they sit in there. They don't fall out, all right? So I always use a 5.30 seconds hole for absolutely everything. Because if you use a hole punch that's too small, you'll have a hard time going it through there. If you use it too big, then they fall out and you can't, you know, it makes it easier to manipulate um, and, and put stuff together. The good thing about these Chicago screws from Wicked Incorrect, well, not Wicked, Weaver Leather is they have a Torx 15 head. All right, and it's super easy. It doesn't slip, it grabs super fast. And I'm gonna put a drop of red Loctite in each one of the backs of these posts. A little bit goes a long way, nothing crazy. Then what I do is I put the mail already in there. I flip it up and then I don't tighten it 100%, I'll just get it going to it until it's pretty tight, but not 100%. Just, it starts to feel some tension. Then I flip this around, put that in there, and then flip this. The reason why I don't tighten that just yet is because you gotta get this all squared up before you actually tighten it down all the way. Hey, you all right? See, so you might have to adjust a little bit before you tighten that down, make it nice and clean. All right, now I can tighten this down. is I'm gonna weave this through here, through here. My holster is done. See? I'm gonna put that there. I got eight minutes for my 30 minute countdown. I think this is gonna be two hours total so far. The next thing is let's go ahead and secure this uh, anti sway strap. Woo! 
No, I almost hit my camera. That's bad. I got to start dinner, y'all. It's an anti-sway strap. And that goes back here in this big D-ring. Just like that. So the bucket or radio holster is complete. Um, real quick, I have seven minutes left for my 30 minute mark. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to put the, the uh, acrylic resolution on the other ends. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. And we're done for this video. That's about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. And all we have to do for the next video is punch the holes out on the, the holes that we marked on the radio strap, make the uh, adjustment buckle piece and attach a couple items to that and then put a finisher on there. My secret, uh, my own homemade leather conditioner. Hold on, I'm gonna put this away. And that'll be two hours and 30 minute total time. That's with me talking a lot. I could probably get it down in two hours, but let me do a little outro. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching, Sophia Leather. Thank you very much. This is part four, I think. Part five, like I said, is gonna be not that much, but we're basically almost done. And that's it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a good one, bye.